Transportation is a vital part of our economy, and it is becoming more important with an increased economic activity, increasing global population and increasing goods and products being transported and shipped. The use of buses and trucks has become one of the most common ways to transport people and products. Volvo is a global producer of trucks, buses and industrial machinery. Volvo provides mainly to the transportation or infrastructure industries, which makes Volvo a cyclical company. On the flip side, Volvo also provides solutions for financing and service within the industries they operate. Volvo employs over 100,000 people and has production facilities in 18 countries. This makes Volvo definitely a key player in the vehicle and machinery segment. Volvo Group should not be confused with Volvo Cars, which was sold off to the Chinese Zhejiang Geely Holding Group. However, Volvo Group is still based in Sweden. Volvo sells under different brands such as UD Trucks, Terex Trucks, Renault Trucks and Mac among others. The recent rise of eco-friendly demands and the presence of electric vehicles have created a potential billion dollar industry and Volvo wants a piece of this industry. In the 2019 annual report, the CEO Martin Lundstedt comments that Volvo started to sell fully electric trucks from Volvo and Renault. The Volvo stock has since then been included in the green rally and has since appreciated to a record level of over 200 crowns per share. This roughly translates to 19.82 euros per share or 24 US dollars per share. The increasing awareness of environmental problems caused by global warming, whether it can be blamed on human activity or not, is starting to become a concern for many countries in the world. The increase in plastics in the ocean, the increase in pollution in the air and the melting of the polar ice caps are putting pressure on politicians around the world to act to mitigate the environmental impact that is being caused. In a report written by Sakalidis and Thiel, they report that the European Union has made a key priority to scale up a low-carbon economy where electric vehicles will play a major role. Politicians are adapting to this new movement of creating a sustainable economy. Even though we have a long way to go as a society, we are seeing some progress. In an article written by Nele Rietman and Theo Lieven, they report that political measures have a significant impact on the adaptation of eco-friendly policies, which in turn is good for Volvo. All in all, this bodes well for Volvo. With the increasing popularity of electric vehicles, Volvo is well positioned to show increased profits and capitalize on the growing interest of electric vehicles. However, there is one problem, and that is Tesla. Volvo is not the only player in the game, and Tesla is a player to be respected. Tesla in recent years have introduced innovative products to the electric vehicle market. The products such as the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi will prove tough competition for Volvo. Tesla is also developing self-driving trucks that will require no driver. This is attractive for the transport industry because the companies can now save money on driver salaries. Volvo needs to address this issue and develop technology of their own to stay competitive with Tesla. In the 2019 annual report, CEO Martin Lundstedt announced increasing collaborations with tech-based companies such as Samsung and Nvidia to further develop autonomous transport solutions. The future looks promising for Volvo, but how is Volvo doing from a financial standpoint? Let us take a look at the fundamentals. All financials are presented in Swedish crowns unless stated otherwise. The first thing you should take a look at when reading financial reports are the revenues and the earnings. You would want to see a steady increase to both of these key metrics. Looking at the revenue for Volvo, we see that we have had a slow increase from 2012 to 2016. However, from the year 2016 and onwards, we observe increasing revenues with 2019 being a record year. However, due to the recent global circumstances, Volvo reported 338 billion crowns in revenues, which is 20% lower compared with the 2019 result. The revenue is expected to stabilize during 2021, but the near future is still uncertain. Earnings are also on the increase, with 2019 being a record year with reported earnings of 17.15 crowns per share. This translates to roughly 1.7 euros in EPS and roughly $2 in EPS. However, we saw a sharp drop in earnings for the 2020 fiscal year. Due to global circumstances during the 2020 year, Volvo halted production due to decrease in demand for trucks 
buses and machinery. The bus segment was hit the hardest due to people working from home. Public transport companies halted investment in buses because people simply didn't use them as much. Volvo is focusing on producing and selling electric vehicles during 2021 in Europe and the Northern America. How this will affect earnings is still hard to forecast, but it is expected that the result for 2021 will be better than 2020. The shareholder's equity is calculated by taking all the assets of a company and subtract them by all the liabilities. The shareholder's equity gives an indication of how solvent a company is. It shows how much the company owns. We can further use the shareholder's equity to calculate important metrics such as return on equity. However, we can see a steady increase of the shareholder's equity which is a sign that the value of the company is increasing. When it comes to dividends, Volvo have historically been generous with dividends while still maintaining an important amount of money to reinvest and strengthen their business. We see an increase of dividends for 2019 fiscal year when record earnings were reported. During 2020, the dividends were cancelled due to economical uncertainties. This has been somewhat compensated for in 2021 with a record dividend of 15 crowns per share. This translates to 1.49 euro per share or 1.8 dollars per share. We can expect future dividends in the range of 7 to 10 Swedish crowns per share if we are to be conservative. Looking at profit margins, we see a steady increase since 2013 with a somewhat average profit margin in 2020. The profit margin tells us how much profit was generated of the revenue. A very low profit margin means that the company is not well managed, but it can also mean that the industry is very competitive. The fact that Volvo had an increase in profit margin since 2013 is a good sign that Volvo is doing quite well. The profit margin should be compared with similar companies in the same industry. But a general rule of thumb is that a 10% profit margin is considered quite good for a company. Furthermore, it is always a good idea to calculate the return on equity when analyzing companies. The return on equity tells us how efficient a company is, that is, how much profits can a company produce with the assets that the company owns. We can see that the return on equity in 2012 was 9.76%. At the end of 2019, the return on equity was 25.76%, which was a record for Volvo. For the year 2020, the return on equity dropped to 13.55%, which is the average for Volvo. We should expect a 14 to 18 return on equity for the coming years if we are being conservative. Again, this metric should be compared with similar companies in the same industry. That way, we can see which company is the most effective. Before making an investment decision in a company, always look at the debt. The debt is money that is owed to financial institutions or other investors. We are going to look at the debt to equity ratio, which means how much debt there is per equity that Volvo owns. We can see since 2015 that the debt to equity ratio has not exceeded 3. Volvo maintains a healthy debt to equity ratio and there are several factors why this is important. 1. Some companies like to finance investment and acquisitions with debt. This is risky since if the investment failed, the company is still stuck with the debt. It is better if investments and acquisitions are financed with money that the company already owns. 2. High debt means high interest payments, and high interest payments mean less profits, and less profits means less return for the investor. Speaking of interest payments, let's take a look at how much interest Volvo is paying. We use a formula called Time Interest Earned Ratio. This is an interesting metric that shows how much money is being paid in interest. If you take the income before taxes and interest paid, also known as EBIT, and divide it with the interest payment, you will get the time interest earned ratio. The higher the ratio, the better. A high ratio simply means that the company is earning a lot compared to the interest that is being paid. We can also calculate the interest as a percentage of EBIT. We can see that for Volvo, that interest is a small part of income, so in conclusion, Volvo have stable debt levels. To summarize this video, Volvo is a global company with an interesting future and with decent financials. Volvo is in a good position to capitalize on the era of electrification and eco-friendly direction the world is heading to. With a management that has lifted Volvo this far, Volvo could go even further in terms of increasing revenue and profits. However, the biggest risks are the competitors that want to do the same. Tesla being the biggest competitor that Volvo is facing. So what can you expect from Volvo as an investment? If we want to have a margin of safety, given the position of Volvo today, 
and the earnings that Volvo has managed to generate so far. We could expect at least an earnings per share of 13 Swedish crowns. This translates to approximately 1.29 euro per share or 1.57 US dollars per share. We could also at least expect dividends of 8.5 Swedish crowns per share. This translates to roughly 1.85 euro per share or 1.20 US dollars per share. The current price of Volvo is 210 crowns per share when making this video. You can expect a return on EPS of about 6.1% and an average of 4% in dividend yield. Alright guys, thank you for watching this far. If you enjoy these types of videos, do consider to like and subscribe for more investment videos in the future. Remember to always do proper research before investing your money. See you in the next video and take care.